Welcome to the next episode in the PISD GAF train. This is the eighth stop, Introduction to Crumb. First, you might have to download Chrome. So if you go to google.com slash chrome, and then you'll be able to download it depending on whether you're on a mobile device or your personal computer. Then there's a couple different ways that you can sign in. In the top right, you'll see a person icon, and if you click that, you can sign in to Chrome. This is also where you can switch people or go incognito. Incognito mode is great because it doesn't track any of your sites that you go to or any of the cookies or anything like that, and so it's kind of being invisible on the web. Your, your settings are bars on the top right, and you can also go there to people. When you go into your settings, you can go to the people area, and this is where you can add people to Chrome for login. So when you want to look for your settings, you'll go to the top right, and you'll see the three bars. You'll click on that, and then you'll see Chrome settings towards the bottom. So on the left side, you'll see there's the history. Here's where you can find your extensions, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And then you have your settings. So it tells you who you're signed in as, what your startup looks like. So do you want to open specific pages? Do you want it to continue where you left off or just open a new tab? You can get certain themes to change the appearance of Google Chrome. I have set my search engine to Google. Here's the people area where you can add people or remove. You can also enable guest browsing. And then it talks about your default browser, and mine is Chrome. And then you have your advanced settings. So then it goes into your privacy. And you'll notice some of these, because we're Google Apps for Education, some of these are set by the district and cannot be changed by us. And you'll see this little building and that's what that means. Your web content, what size do you want it to be? Network, languages, where do your downloads go? Accessibility, and you can always reset all of your settings if you need to. The Omnibox is where you're putting URLs. What makes Google Chrome different, and the reason it's called the Omnibox, is because you can put URLs in there, or you can search directly from this box. Apps and extensions are features of Google Chrome that make it very unique. It helps you customize the browser to your specific needs so that you can get apps and extensions that when you're logged in, you have those available to you no matter where you are. In the past, if you were to bookmark items on one computer and then you'd go to another computer, your bookmarks weren't there. Well, that's what apps and extensions do for you. When you're logged into Chrome on one computer and you install different apps and extensions, and then you go to another computer and you log into Chrome, those same apps and extensions are available to you. So apps are actually linked to outside websites, and extensions you will see in the upper toolbar and these are things that work within the page that you're on. They're tools for the page that you're on. You actually get to these by going to the web store. So there's a couple of different ways to get to the web store. If you have apps in your favorites bar at the top, you can click that. And you'll see all of your apps that you've installed, but you'll also see a link to the web store. Another option is to go to your Chrome settings. And if you go to extensions, this is where a list of all of your extensions, and you can enable them or disable them. But if you go all the way down to the bottom, you can go to the web store to get more extensions. Or you can just search Chrome Web Store and it will take you chrome.google.com slash webstore. So 
it first take you to your domain. So for Prosper ISD, you can see there aren't any. So if you're searching for apps, games, extensions, or themes, and then you can just search. You can also, ones run offline by Google, works with Google Drive. You can look at ones by the ratings they were given. So let's take a look at the featured apps. And what you're just going to do is you're going to go through and see what it is that you need. If you have something specific, you can search for it, or you can just look through them. And if you want to look for extensions only, there's also categories that you can look in. So choose the category of what type of tool you're looking for. And then when you find one, so let's do by Google, and there's a Google Hangouts and you can see that it's free and then if you click this it will add it to Chrome. If you add it to Chrome it then shows up in your toolbar. So some of the ones that I have are AdBlock which blocks ads, the Save to Google Drive so if I'm on a page and I click this it'll save whatever's there to Google Drive. I have TechSmith Snagit which is a screen capture tool which I really like. The Share to Classroom extension and then there's the Screencastify. So there's some really useful tools. There are different search options in Google Chrome. You'll notice that when you have the search bar, when you go to Google.com, you'll notice a little microphone, and that's search by voice. When you're looking for images, you can search by an image, or you can type in a word to find images. Now, one of the important things to do and to teach your students is when you are searching for images, you want to then click Search Tools and go to Usage Rights. You want to make sure that the pictures they're using that they find in Google are labeled for reuse. You want to make sure that you're not breaking copyright, but also that your students aren't breaking copyright. And this is a quick and easy way to do that. If you ever need to sign out of Chrome, if you're on a public computer and you want to use some of your extensions, you might sign into Chrome, but then you want to make sure to sign out before you leave that public computer. There's not a button that's just sign out. You actually have to go back into your settings, and then underneath where it says sign in, you have to disconnect your Google account you're disconnecting it from that computer, from the Chrome browser on that computer. So when you go you know, sign in again, you can reconnect it. And then it's going to say disconnect your Google account, and you're going to click on clear data and disconnect. This has been a quick introduction to Google Chrome.